Hello everyone. It's Kate Richberg and it is time for Bead Shop Live on this Wednesday, February 3rd. Before I switch the camera over, um, if you guys will let me know if you can hear me um, before I get uh, the camera um, moved. So just let me know if you would that you can hear me. Great, it looks like you guys can. Good, perfect. All righty then. I will switch this camera over in just a moment as I put everything in place here for our broadcast. We're gonna have a great time today. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. So, here we go. I think we're ready. I'm ready if you are. And welcome, everybody. Yes, I'm back in the Facebook broadcast room. I was here early this morning and kind of did some rearranging and stuff. So, we've got, uh, we've got a nice workspace for this uh, project today. So uh, what we're, let me talk a little bit about some announcements that we've got going on, and then we will get started. So of course, you can always find us, you guys, right on our social media, um, on our um, Instagram feed at beadshop.com, of course, at the bead table on Facebook, our Facebook group. And you can always subscribe and rewatch all of our broadcasts right on our YouTube channel at beadshop.com. We also, I also wanted to mention a big hi and hello to um, people who are watching us on other streams, like the Great Bead Extravaganza page, as well as the Great Bead Extravaganza YouTube channel. It's great to have all of you guys here as well. And speaking of great, the Great Beat Extravaganza, I'm going to change the slide here, but I'm still back here. I'm still back here. It's kind of funny with hands. Um, Saturday, February 6th, we have, maybe I'll, can I come in there? There, there's two of me. That's kind of weird. Um, it's, we're coming at you on the Great Beat Extravaganza page all weekend. Uh, it's going to be a really, really great event. It's coming up actually starting, let me put this one up, starting on Friday, February 5th, you'll join us. Uh, actually, our wonderful Brenda Schwader is going to start us off with a desert walk at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. And then we're going to have a project preview starting at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and all of the designers are going to be on a crazy Zoom call. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, you can see me uh, Saturday, February 6th from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Pacific, and that's 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So I have some more announcements, but I will save those until the end of the broadcast. Let's see. Oh, and we've got Brenda watching. Brenda, it's great to have you. Uh, we can't wait for you to kick off our fantastic um, our fantastic uh, event for Great Beat Extravaganza. But for today, you guys, oh, I need to straighten out my, this HD thing is, no wonder people like, <laughs> there we go. I think I'm set. I think I'm all right. So uh, we'll have a really great uh, Beat Extravaganza this weekend, but let's start with what we've got today, you guys. Today is the tapestry project, and I think you're going to really love it. So let me bring this camera in here and show you what I've got going on uh, here. And uh, make sure, oh, you're not getting any sound on this one. Let me double check. Um, bear with me here just a second. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, um, bear with me here. I'm going to remove, oh, you do? You have sound? Okay, great. Okay. We're all good? Everyone has sound? Okay, great. 
I just want to make sure. Okay, good, good. All right. I guess maybe I can take myself <laughs> out of the stream. So let's just do this little layout. All right, there we are. So what I've got, yeah, with this new layout, I want to make sure that the sound is all good uh, with this. And Gita, uh, we have our moderators in place, of course. We've got Gita moderating over on Facebook. Um, and I have uh, Janice moderating over on uh, YouTube. Um, and I will play around uh, with, it looks like the sound is, is working out okay. So um, let me know, I'll play around with those sound settings a little bit later, but, um, but for now, let's jump into this project, shall we? Um, what Gita is saying, which is kind of uh, fun, is that the first, our first uh, broadcast was uh, all about looming as well. So it's kind of fun to uh, be doing this one on the box here also. So I'm going to share with you kind of where this project has come from and where this project will eventually be going. Um, this is where it's going to be going, but uh, Tapestry is kind of a bead shop classic, and I've pulled some in from our wall, our wall of fame uh, here, and I wanted to share these with you. Um, we do this on a tray, right, like this, uh, just our design trays. Let me see if I can straighten it out so we don't feel wonky. There we go. And I'm going to show you how to wrap this really super easy. I've used regular Ceylon for that, but I'll go over that in just a second. And here we have some of our older projects. This is a great one because you can really toss everything or anything out at the Tapestry Project, and I think it would work beautifully. Okay, and let me just keep laying these guys. It's endless. These Tapestry bracelets are endless, right? So you can see, I haven't been in here in so long, I don't have a pointer. Whoops, there's some scissors though. I could use those. Maybe I'll use a, uh, I don't have an awl. Emily would be so ashamed of me. Let me use, let me use my pen. That's what I'm gonna use um, as my pointer here. So you can see the basics for this, kind of the basic recipe is, and, and I'll tell you what I used also at the same time. The basic recipe is a, um, and I've got some here, is a four, you need either a four millimeter or um, either a round or a faceted fire polish. You can see here, right, like that. And then um, you can see, and it goes through here, 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 and here. Then we've got some super duos. And we've got the super duos coming in here. You can see the super duos are here, here, and here. You can do the super duos as a single color, like I did this one. Or you can double them up. And I used in mine, I used the matte velvet dark teal and the Capri crystal Capri gold matte. And this... Um, Dark matte velvet dark teal is a new one for us. We've got some new ones in, and they're really gorgeous, I think. Um, okay, so we've got these. And then you need some ADOTs. And so I used in the ADOTs, they're right here, I used the 8-4701. It's the Rainbow Celadon, also a fairly new one for us, okay? And you can see the ADOTs are in the background here. I also wanted, right, like, what a surprise, Kate also wanted metal because that's my jam, right? And so here is, I use these little shadows, which are also about the equivalent of that ADOT there. But you could introduce a second ADOT color if you wanted. And I also wanted to show you way, way, way back in the day, a while back, I did this tapestry bracelet that uses our skyline clasp. It's really wide. And instead of using super duos, what I used were Tyler's. Again, 
with the shadows. I think these are also little shadows. A four millimeter fire polish. I used an eight millimeter copper bead um, and I used a few 11 knots. Can you see those there? And then the whole secret of ending this tapestry bracelet is this weave. Okay, and when uh, we're doing traditional weaving, we call this the weft. Okay, the threads that go from the left to the right and then the right to the left are called the weft. And I remember that because weft and left rhyme. Okay, so the threads that go up and down that you're weaving onto, that's called the warp. Okay, so the warp runs from north, north to south and the weft runs from east to west, which also rhymes with wet. <laughs> west. I can't, I can't, let me take another drink of coffee. <laughs> Here, okay. There we go. So this one I made uh, to fit this skyline clasp. And so the, the width of the clasp really dictates the width of this um, bracelet. Okay, so this one, and I've got my tape measure here, my trusty tape measure. So you can see this one that I did a while back, and it's so slinky. I, I love it. I don't, um, I don't wear it as often as I should. This is an inch and a half because the inch and a half, that's the size of the opening here, okay? Inch and a half or about 35, 36 millimeters about, okay? So, and then you can see it'll just come around and it just clips. I love the skyline clasp. I think it looks so, so slick, okay? So it, it, it's a good one. I like a uh, say something tough, right? I like it a lot. So, um, but this guy also, I think, looks, it's a nice slim one, well, not super slim, but um, you can also stack it, right, if you were, um, which one do I want to try on? Maybe this one. You could also stack it if you're wearing other bracelets and stuff as well, so you can see it sits a little bit smaller. And you can, you know, create the design that you like. This one, you can see, has the four millimeters kind of front and center. And then uh, this is a four millimeter round semi-precious, facet semi-precious. And then you go to the four millimeter fire polish there. Okay. So, um, so however you want to do it, right? It's you are the designer. So let me talk to you a little bit about how I designed this cuff. I'm going to get rid of these distracting beauties for now. So uh, bear with it. And, and Judilyn's saying, oh, Judilyn, she is saying, Judy Lynn, maybe it is. Uh, she says she's overwhelmed. Ah, you know what, Bead Sister, don't be overwhelmed. I'll tell you why. Uh, because when we start to build this piece, you really just need to think in sections, okay? So remember, the, and if you go to beadshop.com, you'll see uh, the ingredients that I use. You don't have to use what I use, right? You don't have to use the colors I use, whatever. You can kind of choose your own adventure with these, of course. You just need to make sure that things kind of work together in the um, warp here, and I'll show you about that. So let me get a little bit closer, okay? I'm gonna go in a little bit. And first I chose my clasp because everything else predicates on um, the size of this clasp. So I use this dotted clasp here. It's the uh, 20 millimeter um, opening. And so when I wrapped my threads, I could see that five channels, I believe that's correct. One, two, three, four, five channels fit uh, in that clasp. Okay, so I determined that's where that was gonna go. And then I set this aside. You could also, if you wanted a slimmer one, there's half the size of the um, of this uh, clasp. We've got the 10 millimeter opening, so you could make it um, a little thinner too. You could do that. It would work the same way. It would just be uh, not quite as wide, which some people may um, may want. Okay. So I'm going to set this clasp aside so it won't get in my way. Now my center for this guy is right here. This is my center point, okay? So when I started, I'm gonna turn this board so you guys can kind of see it. 
when I started this project, this design, okay, I started it in the middle. And then I'm working my way out. Gosh, my nails just look terrible today. I'm sorry. There's still, there's no, uh, there's no, not that my nails ever look that great, but there's still, there's manicures are available, but eh, I'm still, we're still playing it safe here. We're not going out a whole heck of a lot right now. So no manicures for Kate yet, but um, they're, they're coming. They're coming. Manicure days are coming. So you can see, I started here right in the center and I started with this center band of four millimeter uh, fire polish, okay? And I just strung my thread and I went to kind of the center part of the thread and I wove in and out just a couple of times to secure it nicely. And then I think I went to this side to the left and I just started putting in lines of design that I liked. So I put a plain uh, band of a dots. you can kind of see it there, and then a plain band of um, shadows, then another plain band of a dots, and then a little rectangle of the four millimeters. I framed it with uh, the shadows, then I put in the super duos. Now, if you'll notice, you guys, the super duo, this section of super duos, and this section of super duos, can you see, uh, they, are offset because there's no center here, okay? So you can see that this one, there's three, three, and three, and the three is kind of balanced to that side, and on this side, there's three, three, and three, and on this one, it's the opposite. It's balanced on this side. So I kind of made it a little bit opposite there, okay? So uh, let me continue. So you can see I'm here, so now I have to mirror this one, and then I'm going to take a um, uh, I'm going to take a measurement. So let me turn this around. And the great thing about working on this board is you can work kind of back and forth here with no problem. I'll show you also basically what I did before I get any further. I just want to show you. Let me lift this up just a second. What I did was I used Ceylon, regular Ceylon. Sorry, this board is a little. Um, a little grim, it's a little dirty, but you know, whatever, it'll work. You should see Drea's beadboard. It's even worse than this, right? So then you'll just come in and you'll wrap around your board as many times as you need to, and then you'll bring it to the back and you'll tie a nice knot here at the back. Let me cut this away. And we have a, a great skill builder on how to uh, warp your beadboard as a loom, okay? But you just bring it in, tighten, and then you tie a full square knot over the top, and then I do another half hitch there. You wanna make sure that your warp threads are pretty tight. Not so tight that you're pulling the thread, but tight enough so that there's a little bit of bounce on those threads, okay? So after that, that's when I start in the center, right? Work my way out. And I started to kind of, I did this section, then this section, then I repeated that section. So I had a nice snapshot of what it looked like. And then I worked this section and this section, again, giving me a snapshot. So then I added this one. And so now I'll add this one over here. So the row that I'm on, and I'm just gonna dump out my beads here. You know, if you watched uh, the Beetle on uh, Design Challenge, you saw that I work well from just a pile of beads that are dumped in the center. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that design challenge at the end of our broadcast because I've got a couple of updates for you on that as well. So I'm coming from, on this side, I was going from the left to the right. Okay, so this side, since I turned it around, I'm going from the right to the left. And I'm going to show you something here, really close up, something that came up here that I want you to, to look out for. See, I have this little kind of bubble of thread. It's hard to see if my finger's in the way. That's right there, okay? You want to be really careful about these little bubbles here because they can get in, they can happen. 
So since I don't have an awl sitting here right now, I'm going to use one of my T-pins. And what I can do to remove that is I'll come in, there's my the little loop of thread. I'll come and I'll pull, and then I'll pull. Okay, just like that. And that takes care of that. All right, so let me lift this back up. There we go. And I'll come in. Oops, I don't want to unthread my needle. You can use a sharp, a sharps or, or just a regular size 10 beading needle. Any of those will work. I'm going to try not to get all of this. I'm so used to looming the other way so that when I do it this way, it can be a little, um, it can be a little bit challenging for me. But see how I get my finger underneath the design and I push my threads down to make sure that uh, the thread is sitting down nice in the channel between those beads. Okay, like that. Let me get a little tighter in. Okay, so you can see that. Now with my needle, everything is coming up from the bottom, so with my needle, I'll come across the top. There we go, just like that. Okay, and pull it through. And that tightens everything up. I push the beads together, not so tight that it's going to um, be too tight when we take it off of the box. That's the thing. You want some tension here, and I'm going to show you. It looks maybe like it's a little bit tight, but I'm going to show you what I do before, um, as I'm closing it off, that makes a little bit of a difference. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I've spoken a lot here. Um, Donna is asking, and it's a great question, uh, Donna's asking, oh, no, Je that's Janice's comment. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. Donna's asking, is there a specific seed bead brand that works better than others? Well, uh, Donna, we carry uh, Miyuki here at Bead Shop, um, and the Super Duos are actually Czech right here. They're a Czech bead. But the Miyuki um, are Japanese seed beads, and they play together very well. What I would say is you probably just need to be um, consistent, though there isn't that much consistency in this tapestry, right? Because I'm using a whole bunch of different beads here, right? So um, you can just test it and see what works for you. So see here how the, the four millimeters are kind of a little bit larger, so they're coming out a little bit further than those A dots. What I do is I push everything into place and then I pull my thread a little bit to fix the tension. And then as I go back through the top, I'm going to go back through and then I'm going to adjust everything a little bit. You play a little bit of an adjusting game here. And what you don't want to do, you guys, let me say again and you'll see this, you don't want everything too tight. Okay, so let me pull this through. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of Sometimes I do this, I intentionally loosen it a little bit, and then I pull this warp thread, and then I just gently push everything back into place so that this line visually looks pretty straight. Okay? So now I'll finish it up with one, and the A dots are a great equalizer. So if you're like, well, uh, you know, this is this line is a little bit off or whatever, just throw in a line of A dots or a line of the, um, the little shadows and it'll kind of equal everything out. Two, four, six, eight, I need two more. And then we'll have it match and then we will um, measure it, okay? So we'll come around from the bottom and I will put each of those little beads in its own little channel. I like using this regular Ceylon for this tapestry project. I like that the warp threads are kind of an integral part of this design because the thread definitely shows. Um, especially like that tapestry, I think I called it magic carpet maybe, I can't remember. Um, but it's on the, the website. But you can see using that Ceylon in there um, it kind of makes it even more, um, what do I want to say, thread forward or um, kind of, you know, fabric forward. So it really has kind of a textile look to it. And then um, it also makes it very, very slinky and very, um, you know, very kind of good to the touch here like that with all of these little um, warps that are in there. Let me put it here for the moment. 
and I'll come in and tighten that one up. So the one, so my wrist, so let's talk measuring here for just a second, okay? So my wrist is six and a half inches, okay? And the one that I really like the way it fits, I don't want it to be too loose because I don't want it to catch on anything, okay? But this is the fit that I kind of like, that I can get kind of a fingertip up there, all right? So I will, um, I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to measure my beat. Now you can see here, see how this is much more of an ADOT, the, the background, we have got a lot of ADOTs in this design, and just the super duos here in the center, which are very pretty. So it just depends. Gita's asking, am I using the jewel loom needle? You could, Gita, but I feel like it's a little long for this. I'm just using the regular size 10 beading needle, okay? So here is this. This um, measurement, door to door, as I like to say, is six inches of beading, okay? What I also need to take into consideration, though, kids, is the clasp, how long the clasp is. So the clasp that I'm using here, the length, well, it's about the same. It's just a little bit of a heavier look, so I thought it might be a little longer, but it's about the same, maybe like a millimeter longer. Okay, can you see that there? So let me measure. That is going to add about an inch to my overall length. So the overall length of this piece for me is going to be seven inches, which is just about right. I might add one extra row of eight dots at the end here. Um, Eileen's asking, will it stretch? Well, Eileen, it's a great question. These have been um, made for quite some time, and I don't see a lot of stretch in them. Ceylon doesn't have a lot of stretch to it, really, because it's um, uh, because it's nylon thread, right? It's not like a natural fiber that might that might stretch. You can see on this one, we made this one so long ago. The outer portion of this one, this is a cotton cord. So if you wanted the outside edges to have a little more oomph to them, you could. This is 1.5 millimeter, so it might be a little bit big, but it would work. You could put a piece of leather on the outside, right? Um, or like a 0.5 millimeter or the one millimeter surfer cord. You could do that too. And I've done that um, also with these. Um, and so uh, there's another great question about this from Anne. Anne says, would it help to use a blunt needle so no danger of splitting the threads? It's a good question. We have tapestry needles, Anne, but they're too, um, they're too heavy, they're too thick. Um, the tips of the seed bead needles, they're sharp, but there's plenty of room to bypass this thread so you don't split it. So um, I, I didn't have any, any, in, uh, any issue with that at all, okay? Um, and this is another great question from Ronnie. Ronnie is asking, what's the maximum size bead that you would use? Um, and do you suggest low profile beads? Um, I would say that you want to keep it to about a four millimeter in the round because that's what fits nicely in this channel that works with this clasp. However, if you're using something that's wider, sorry, I just dropped my tape measure here. Hang on, let me grab it. There we go. Um, if you're doing something wider like this one, um, you can see I used the Tyla, the regular Tyla. You could use the quarter Tyla, half Tyla. Um, those would also work as well, and that width uh, just adds to this design because the clasp is wider. Um, you just have to make sure that you're using beads that you can use in multiples to fit against each other. Okay, so um, and you can see in this one, some of the channels are different sizes. So you can see this channel here and this channel here were skinny. And this one here, these were all skinny. And these I made wider to fit this Tyla bead in. Okay, so you just have to plan it out a little bit like that. Okay, so that's, um, 
that's how you do it. And so again, you just kind of play around with um, with the width, and you can use like a piece of wire or something and thread a few combinations so you can kind of hold them up to your warp threads and see how it works. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me measure this. That's what that's where I am. <laughs> where am I? Who are all of you people watching? All right. So what I've got here, we've got four inches. So I'm going to go, I'm going to place that three because that's the center point. I need about an inch on each side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this pattern here. Okay, here and here like that. Okay, that's where we're going to... Um, that's the next one I'm going to add. And I like that repetition of the super duos anyway, so I think that works for me. Let me get a little closer in. I do like the, um, the way that these sections have been kind of sectioned off using the um, little shadows, so I'm going to use those as well. I'm, my little shadows are in my precious little crow dish that my friend Cynthia made for me. I love the way little shadows look in that little bead dish, so... I've just left them in there. So I need 10 of these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops, and now I don't know how many were. Two, four, six, eight, nine, yep, 10. Okay, there we go. And I'll push them underneath. And looming with the super duos is a little bit of like a spatial relationship challenge, okay? Um, but you'll see what I mean by that when I loom with them, when I weave with them. Okay, that goes through. Keeping an eye on the comments there. It looks like there's a whole bunch of you watching, which is great. It's great to have all of you guys here. Now with the super duos, I'm going to look at this section. I jump into the super duos right away. I'm going to put this other line on that side. So let me turn this around. So can you see here now that I've turned this box around? I'm going to turn this ship around. I uh, And I'll thread a needle on the end here. Um, I think I've got one on my little pin cushion that Emily gave me. I think that this looks right. Oh, good, and it's nice and bent, ready to go. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'll keep the needle on the other side so I don't have to take it off and on all the time. Okay. Get that thread out of the way because I don't want it to catch. I also have these little ends coming out from the bottom, which are a little bit distracting to me, so I'm going to get rid of those. Okay, so let me pour out a few more eight, uh, a few more eight outs here. So I've got those, and I want to put that line of little shadows in there. Sometimes you want to look at, see like Emily always says, you kind of look at the beads on your needle. This little shadow, the size might be a little off, so I'm going to reject that one. Sorry, buddy. Um, if it's just a little too small or a little too large, it might sit. It might make the warp look kind of funny. Let's take a look at these. Yeah, you can see that one is a little small too, so I'm going to remove that one. How many do I have? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, I said, and ten. Then I'll bring this underneath here. Okay. And I will push it up from underneath. Now you can also see here, I'm getting a little close to this edge, right? It's a little uncomfortable here. I can't get my finger or my hand in there quite as easily. So the cool thing about stringing the piece this way on the board is I can also easily move it around the board. So I can do that by, there we go. See how I can just slide it, how I grabbed it and just slid 
Okay, you can also use that to make a longer piece. I have it warped um, on the short side of the tray, but you could also warp it on the long side of the tray as well and have a really long part to, to um, weave with. You could have this side and then, you know, you just keep moving it around as it goes as you need to free up more space to weave onto. So let's take a look. Um, I'm just going to mimic this one that's right here. So I start with two a dots, and then I go one a dot and one super duo in the top hole. Okay, well, at top or bottom, it doesn't matter because you'll place it there. Okay, and then another a dot. You can see that there, and another super duo, and then. One more a dot, one more super duo. Okay, then I'll finish up with the two a dots. So this is what your little lineup looks like. Okay, just like that. Let me get a little closer here, so you guys can see what's going on. Then I'll put this length of beads underneath, like I would normally, and see how each of the two beads flow into that little channel. They sit just right there. So now I'm going to come back. I'm going to ignore this bottom hole in the Super Duo. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm just going to come back through, and I go through those two. I go through the top hole of the Super Duo. I go through the A dot, top hole, A dot, and there you have it. Okay? Just like that. All right. And Janice is saying, Janice is giving a really good point to this. Check the holes on your super duos, you guys. Sometimes the second hole is clogged, so when you get to the next row, you can't string it, which is a bummer. You can also, if it is clogged, you can kind of try and open it up if you have like a tip of your awl or of that T-pin that I was using earlier. Sometimes you can unclog it. But uh, it's best to check um, to check them before you use them if you're not in a hurry like me. So now let's do the second row of pattern. Okay, can you see that here? If I look at my second row, I don't have anything to block this. I don't think I don't have any little paper sitting here. Um, I I do have this post-it note that's not real pretty, but it'll show you what row I'm on. So you can see here, I'm going to add this row as next. So if I put that here, let me get a little tighter with the camera so you can see it. I'm going to come in, there's that second row, so I'm going to put on two A dots. Now I'm going to put on a fresh Super Duo, that Crystal Capri. Then I'm going to go through the whole of the previous Super Duo. Okay? So let's just do that part because you have to do these in sections. Okay, so here's my two that I put on, and now I grab that um, that crystal capri gold mat. That's that next one, and then what I do is I go through the hole in the super duo and bring my needle under. Okay, so you can see what happens now is how these beads have nestled in. Okay, so what's next? You can see right here, there's an opening. We do another one of those crystal. And then I also go through the hole, and I'm all working underneath here of that one. And now I'll just continue on that Crystal Capri through the bottom of this guy and two more A dots. One and two. Just like that. Okay. I push everything up and see, even those super duos, I kind of, I just make it kind of so they come up nice and tight, right? 
this comes around and I just make my way back through on the top of this. Cindy's asking about the clasp, this counterpart of this clasp in silver. Our supplier has it back ordered right now. If you're watching this live on February 3rd, we will be getting it back in as soon as we can. I was originally going to use silver on this piece, uh, but we couldn't get the clasp in silver. It was sold out. And still, due to COVID, there's still um, some supply chain issues, right? So um, we're just waiting on it. So put yourself on the notification list and you will be notified as soon as it's back in stock. So now we're on this row right here. Can you see that? And so I'm going to add the next Super Duo, which is offset there. So I'm going to add in, I've gone through the Crystal Capri. So I'll add in the matte teal and I'll kind of push it in the, where it goes. And then I'll go through the crystal, another super duo on the bottom, there we go, and through that second hole of the crystal capri. And it's good, I think, for this first one to use two colors because this part can be a little confusing if you don't have the two different colors to, to look at. So there you go, and let's put in two of those A dots, one and two. Come on now. There we go, little A dot. Get everything into place. Push everything up in the channel, this little channel, and now go back through. Oh, and thank you for asking about what thread am I using. I'm using a skinny thread. So you can use KO, which is what I'm using. I'm using KO in denim. I'm sorry I didn't mention that earlier. You can use HANA or Superlon D. Any of the skinny threads will work. You could even use Micro Celon if you wanted to, because the holes on all of these are large enough. Um, it just depends on the thread that you like, okay? So let me finish up this last one with, uh, you can see here, I'm just going to go the A dot route here, and this section will almost be finished. So this guy and another A dot, and we'll go through that last hole of the Super Duo, and then I need another A dot. Whoops, my needle wanted to go through that Super Duo, but I can't yet. There we go. Put it on, go through the next one. Nope, whoops, that's not right. It needs to go on this side of the Super Duo. Sorry about that. And then through the hole. My fingers are feeling giant right now. There we go, that one, and another A dot. Don't let this part deter you. It's a little fussy, but it's not terrible right? Get in your Zen moment. Breathe in and out as you're doing it. You'll be fine. Okay, come through. Like so. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I did this. I put that bead on and notice here, I've got three. Okay, three. So I need to take one off. I could just take the needle out and pull it back, but I'm going to play with fire a little bit here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to break this bead off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the pin in there and I need to be really careful. I'm going to crush it. I don't want to break this thread. Sometimes when you crush a seed bead, right, it'll break your thread. It'll cut your thread. So I put my pin through it. I come here with my plier and I press. I need to be really careful not to hit myself in the face with these little flying pieces of seed bead glass, but you can see it popped right off. No problem whatsoever. And you can see I'm back in business. 
So breaking off a seed bead isn't as scary as it sounds. Just make sure that you are covering it so that the detritus of these glass seed beads doesn't fly up into your face or the face of anyone that you're sitting next to. And also try and gather all of those little shards, especially if you bead with pep smear, um, because they are little shards of glass. So you want to make sure to be aware of where those go. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and Holly's asking, if I cut my thread, well, what do I do? So what I would do, it's a great question. So what then I would do if I broke my thread, I would take my thread out long enough, maybe about three inches worth of thread, and I'd weave that back in, and I'd weave in a new thread. That's all I'd do. So sometimes, you know, if you're ready to play with fire, right, um, you can do that, and I'm, I'm down. Usually I can get it done. And with the pin on the inside of the, um, of the piece, um, it kind of protects the thread a little bit. Let me see if I can work this around. My hands don't want to move it. There we go. If I grab onto the weaving, I can move it a little bit because I want to finish this guy up with one of the um, of these, one row of these guys. So two, three, four, five, oops, five, six. Get them on there so they don't fall off. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Because I've got, whoops, and I'm a genius. I put it on the wrong uh, needle. <laughs> well, that's okay because I'm going to, I was thinking about doing two rows anyway. So let me just do two rows of it. I'm going to leave that there. All right. And... Let me put 10 of these on. Whitney is asking, is there any chance to see the new Super Duo Transparent Leisure Blue up close and personal? Well, since this is live, JP, if you can text Chris and ask him to bring it in. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll be glad to show it. Okay, so let's see if modern technology works for that. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to bring these through. I'm going to start speeding up this process because I want to get to the part where we put the clasp on. So I've got a little bit of work ahead of me here. So uh, if you do need to refill your coffee cup, or as they say in the Tour de France, take a nature break, uh, now is a good time to do it. I always like that. We always laugh at that. I don't know. It's funny. Funny. Uh, this one is a reject, so I toss it away. One, two, three, four, five. That one is a no. Six, uh, seven. I'm going to be picky. Seven, I think I want to delineate and have two rows of these anyway, so I think that'll look good. I'm going to check for my center point now to see how much more I have to add on this side. So let me take a look. Okay, let me get this back through. As you start careening towards the end of this bracelet, right, measuring often will um, allow you to get this exactly the right size. You won't go over. Okay, let me see. That looks good. And everything is caught and set. Uh, let me measure. If three, if that's my center point right there, I need, I'm going to put in two rows of eight dots. And that's how we're going to finish it. Okay, so. Let me do it. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Go back through the 
top and one last one for this side. Then we'll do the other side and then comes the closing off point. To close, when I do this closing, when I show you the closing, if this were regular Kate jewelry making and not demoing live in front of all of you nice people, I would not do the closure until the next day or I would take a significant break in between, right? Because this bead weaving, two, four, six, eight, ten, the bead weaving can be like a little fatiguing sort of, right? A little tiring. And so if you attempt the closure when you're a little tired, it might not be the best, okay? You want to be fresh when you tackle it. So that's always my advice. Now see, here's my last one. So I'm going to go under that warp thread on the side, and then I'm going to go back through the top row. And that's how I would weave this off, right? If I needed to weave off a thread to add a new thread, I would just kind of weave back and forth in the material there, right? And then I would, um, and then I would put a new thread in and weave back down into the point where I had to pick it up. But here I'm just going to reinforce the ends, and I'm going to actually come around the warp thread on this side. And come around just like that so it reinforces it nicely. And then we're going to call it a day on this side for now. So let me split it. Let me uh, flip it around. Now I'm right here at the edge of this piece here. So, and I thought I was saving thread by doing this, right? Um, if you do this the long way, you'll have plenty of room. But I wanted this to fit in the camera as well. So, um, so that's why I did it on the short side. You can see here, let me show you what I'm doing. See how the threads get a little, what I like to say, wonky here? What all I need to do is, with my fingernail, I'll kind of move them over so they're spread out correctly again. Okay, that's it. That's it. Oh, and I see. It's hail. I don't know why I wanted to make it super exotic by saying holla, but it's hail as in gale with an H. Perfect. Hail. I don't know. It sounded kind of foreign and exotic to me. So, but hail. Great. I got it. I got it. Perfect. Um, I'm with you. Because I, I hate it when people, people mispronounce names. You know, as, as a little girl growing up, I was called Katie, right? Katie with a Y, though, not an IE, right? And so uh, it was often mistaken. My mom is on the is in the crowd here, so she'll know this story. Um, often it was mistaken for Kathy, which I hated because it wasn't my name. My name was Katie, not Kathy. So it's not. Uh, so I understand wanting your name to be right, right? Um, Oh, I put this, is this, this right? No, I've got to put in my other, I thought I was at the end. I'm jumping the gun here. So excited about that. So no, I have to take this out, but that's okay. It's easily taken outable, and I'll just show you. You just do this. You take these beads out from underneath, and you just take them off. Done. So let's restring that needle. And this is the section I'm going to be repeating here. So two A dots, and I'm going to go a little bit faster at Kate's speed, though I am going to dump out a few more of these. And I can grab them uh, too. So don't worry, we'll get we'll get the uh, we'll get your we'll get your A dots going. So I need to look at this, and I go okay, super duo. Super duo, there we go. The other one was shy. An A dot, a super duo, an A dot, super duo, an A dot, and two eights. That's why 
I like doing these in sections. So I start from the middle. For those of you who joined us late, the order of operations for this is I started right in the center of this design. And so the center is the most important measurement, right? And then it makes it easy for you to kind of measure, uh, measure the sides as you go along um, the length to get the length uh, to the proper fit that you will need for your wrist. So, um, and then I just kept reversing like I do now. So I did like one little section and then I repeated that section on the opposite end. And so that's how it grew. Um, you could, if after you do one of these, you could um, start from one end and go to the other if you're making it exactly the same, right? But um, starting in the center gives you a lot of freedom to design kind of on the fly. So here's when I add my next super duo and I put that one in. I hold everything in place with the tip of my needle. There goes the next super duo. It's kind of hard to see with the warp threads in the way, but that's all right. And two of the A dots, one and two. There we go. Okay. Finger underneath, pull it tight, and now kind of finagle those beads into their channel. Stay in your lane, beads. There we go. And push that warp thread down so you don't catch it. And come on in. Sail your needle through the top hole of the new super duo and the bottom hole of the previous one. There we go. <clears throat> and through. There we go. You can also check this too, right? As you go back through before you pull your needle through, you can kind of see if you can see like your needle in between all of these beads, you know that the needle has come up and around and on top. Okay, so now let's put this final row. It doesn't take that long, right? It might seem like, oh my gosh, there's so many little twists and turns to this one, but it's pretty straightforward. You just need to remember that when you pass your uh, thread through, thank you. I've got the leisure right here. I'll show you. Chris needed a shipping break, I bet. So I'll open those up a little bit later. And these. Okay, so it goes through underneath. And I just made this Super Duo section a little small. I mean, you could do this pattern all the way across, right? You can pick one pattern and put it, you know, have it go. You don't have to make different little squares or sections. I don't know. But I kind of like these little sections that are, um, oops, that one, I think I nicked the thread. Let me just pull it back out. That, yeah, there we go. I could just feel it by pushing on this warp thread with my finger. I could feel that it wasn't loose, and I had indeed started to go through the warp thread, but I stopped myself, which is good. So now here's our final one. So I'll put on that super duo. And the A dot. Oh, you know what? I bet you guys saw the mistake because I'm like, wait a minute, where's my super duo to come back through? Oh well. I should have put a super duo on and not a an A dot. No. That's okay. If you can see how I just carefully take it out. If you know how to put if you put beads in you got to know how to put them out, right? So that's where my where my mistake showed up. So I'll just fix it. That's okay. No big deal. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I was like something's missing. There we go. 
the super duo goes on and you can see I'm going to just slide it whoops I'm going to slide it there we go going from right to left always kind of screws me up a little bit because I'm so used to doing my bead weaving left to right oh and see there's that extra bead on there my goodness let me just have a reset here. I'm just going to pull it out. I'm not going to break it because if I break this thread at this point, I'll just go off and try in the corner. So I'm not going to tempt fate. I tempt, tempted fate once this morning. We don't want to do it again. Let's go through there. Whoops. Needle the thread, not thread the needle. Take a moment and breathe. Get that thread through. There we go. Uh, you guys will be here when I get that thread through there. There we go. And this is split. So there we are. Now, reset. Back to the super duo. And that's okay. You know, little bead mistakes happen to all of us. So you just have to take a moment, take a breath, take a reset, take a drink of whatever's near you. And again. They're only beads, you guys. Only beads. There we go. And you can see when I push everything through, everything looks right. So I'll sail this needle back through. And we'll be on the home stretch of this guy. Then we'll do that closure. And I know that's what all of you have been waiting for. Okay, so to finish, we're going to add our row. We're just going to repeat that row. So essentially, the the we just put on the ADOS and go through the bottom holes of these super duos. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> My mom says I'm sounding a little like Bob Ross. You know, I don't know if you guys watch Bob Ross. I was a big Bob Ross fan because my gran and I like to paint, sometimes take our, gran liked to paint with oil paints. Um, and so we take our easels outside and paint out in the air. Um, but I was always a big fan of uh, Bob Ross. I just love it. So um, sometimes I still watch him. You can find him on YouTube and stuff still. It's very reassuring, very calming for these times. Good old Bob Ross. Um, and if you've never watched him, I suggest at least watching one it's a classic, classic painting. Happy little trees, happy little beads, right? So I'll go through and see how I'm watching. I can see, and I think you guys can see that. I want to get a little closer here so you guys can see it. I can kind of visually follow that path of the needle with my eye so I can see that I'm hitting each little bead hole. Sometimes the super duos, it's a little bit of a zigzag situation to try and get it through, but once it's in there, you can see, and you can even see this on, on the video, right, like this, you can see how uh, the needle is going through there, okay? I can see I'm not the only Bob Ross fan, which is awesome. So now I'm just going to check this side. I just four more rows to go. Two rows of shadows, this side over here. Two rows of shadows, two rows of eight offs. Okay, so let's do it like we mean it. Let's get a few more shadows here if I can see them. I guess I'm out of shadows in my little bird dish, so I'll put a few more there. There we go. So, ten, one, two. Four. They're slippery little dudes. Six. Eight and ten. You can see the shadow, the little shadows there, okay? And the little shadows um, have a really nice, generous hole. And the ADOS do as well. It's the super duo in this situation that has the smallest holes there. So when you're choosing thread for this project, 
you always want to go with the thread that's going to fit the smallest hole in your project. So you could also weave like some two millimeter rounds into this um, or three millimeter, you know, size beads as well. You just need to make sure that what you're using, um, the thread that you're using will fit the smallest of the bead holes that you've chosen for your project, two, four, six. So this KO, I think, is a good universal um, thread to use for it because um, it's strong and it'll work with the larger holes of these shadows and the smaller holes of the super duos. Okay, really get them in there, get them in that channel, put this through. And we're just going to come in again. I kind of, I don't want to split any of my threads and the the hole being generous gives me a lot of room to get in there. And now to the last two rows. So we've just got 20 beads to go and that's four. give this before we put the clasp on, I mean regardless of where this length is, I'm going to put the clasp on, but before you make your next move, I would measure everything one final time so that you know that you're on the right track. I'm getting to have a shorter piece of thread, but that's okay. Let me get these guys on there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm one bead short on that. Well, I've got one from over here. That would have been awesome had I put out. Isn't that a satisfying feeling when you put your your beads on and then you um, you have the exact right amount of beads to use as you dumped out? That day you buy a lottery ticket. That's what I always say. And I send it back through. Okay, so I'll do that little um, reinforcement here at the edge. I'll come up through my, around my warp and go through this row and come back through my warp, not through, but around my warp and back through here. And we'll measure. Whoops, don't catch. There we go. Okay. So let's uh, look and see what we've got here. And I want to get this a little closer to the center. So it's centered. There we go. And let me measure. <clears throat> the goal is just a hair. Yep. See, I've got just like a hair. No, you can't see just a hair over six, like one row of beads past six inches. Okay, so this is exactly right for me. So now we're going to put on the end, and we've got just enough time to do that. So what I do first, first I'm going to take a breath here, reposition. I'm actually going to take this out of the shot. I'm going to let it rest over here for a second. And we're going to look at our clasp. Let me get the other bin here, the other tray, because it doesn't like the lights. There we go. So now <clears throat> I'm going to get my trusty post-it note. And I'm going to cut a strip of it. And I'm going to put, oh, I was real close. Cut a little bit more off of that. So that when I place the post-it note on the inside of my um, clasp, I can draw a line with a pen that works. <laughs> on. Let's try this one.
and I can see how much room I have on the interior. So this is that side, and I just want to double check and see if this one fits. How far? Because sometimes the clasp, this, these are about equal. Sometimes, though, once in a while, you'll encounter a class that is deeper on one side than the other. Okay, so now I'm going to measure that length. It's about it's about three eighths of an inch. Can you guys see that? It's about three eighths of an inch. So that's the amount of weaving. I'm going to have to put on the ends of my loomed piece because that's what's going to get glued on the inside of this clasp. Okay? So, let's get our friend back. And this is a part where you just have to trust the process. And the first one, so not all of these, let me get one of these samples. Not all of these samples that we've made, you guys, are perfect, okay? Some of them, see how some of them kind of wave a little bit, they go out and in, whatever, like that, right? A couple of them have like a little bit, it's a little funny at that end, right? Okay, so, so don't start seeing this one is kind of funky right there. Don't stress if this is your first one of these. You just need to take your time and um, create good glue habits, okay? And so that's what we're going to look for here. Now, on some clasps, you guys, if the clasp, if the interior channel or however wide the opening is here, sometimes this channel comes down, tapers down just a little bit. So you have to taper down your ends just a little bit so it fits. But in this case, if I hold it right here, and it's hard for you to see on camera, but if I hold it, it looks like I'm gonna have to taper it. I'm gonna have to pull it in. See if I raise it up a little bit. There go my beads, but see if I raise it here, how you can see how the inside, it's like there's a bead width on either end of these, right? So I'm going to have to cinch up that weaving so that the 3 eighths of an inch of weaving I put on the end is going to slide right inside this clasp. Okay? So uh, I'm going to grab, so for a needle, okay, you can use um, a beading needle for this, but I'm going to show you a little trick that I have used in the past to make a needle with a small eye into a needle with a big eye that's easy to use. So I'm going to get my KO. And some of you may do this trick already. Let me get all of this post-it notes and all of this stuff. And notice how I haven't done anything with the end of this. Okay, here. And I'm going to kind of pull this around so I've got a little bit of room. I haven't cut anything off here yet. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put just a short piece of thread and I'm going to thread the needle and I'm going to tie a loop so I make a loop that is now my big eye. Okay, and now I clip away the extra. So now my needle that had the tiny eye has a big eye. Okay, so it's a good way if you're comboing threads in a piece and you don't have another needle or you can't change a needle or whatever, you can make the needle easy to string. Now, I also don't have, and you know, I should be doing this with this blue thread, but looking around here, I'm not sure it's sitting here. But it's okay, because it will also, this will be easier for you to see. So I'll just use a different 
seal on for my header and my footer because it's not going to be seen. Okay, so here's my my um, regular seal on thread here. Okay, and I'm going to reel off. This is about 14 inches, double, triple that, right? So maybe about a just under, well, maybe about a yard of thread, maybe thereabouts, because you want to make sure that you have enough. Then I'm just going to string this end through like this. And I'm going to kind of double it over like this a bit so I can, um, so I have enough to work with so I don't have to kind of pull the edge in. And what I'm going to do is we're going to weave in and out, in and out. Okay, so I'm going to go over and under, over and under like that. And I'm going to start with this thread that I've already used like this. Okay, just get a couple. And now I'm just going to do the same and weave in and out that header when we weave in weaving in this little cloth weaving. So I guess I'm kind of putting my needle to the center. I would call this the header and the footer that I'm weaving here. So over, under, over, under. And see how that needle just acts as a big, oh, did I nick, did I go through? What you don't want to do is go through your thread. If you do, kind of back it up. go. Okay, and it gives me a nice tight or a nice generous um, thick, I guess, kind of header and footer here. And see how I can pull it in just a bit to taper it in. Okay. So and remember this, we don't want any of this to show. So this needs to be about three eighths of an inch. So I'm almost done. There we go. And you want to tamp it, not super tight, but you want it to be on there. Okay? So let's measure and see what I've got. Uh, almost there. About a eighth of an inch left to go. I should have given myself a little more room on this needle as I wove, but I, I have enough. Tighten it down and then maybe one more pass and that should maybe do it. Okay. Tamp it down. And let's measure. Yeah, I'm going to call that good. Okay. So now, uh, I've got a plastic baggie here somewhere. I brought them in just for this purpose. Now, you can choose the glue that you want to use. Okay. You can use Zap or you can use E6000. Um, I know I need a baby shuttle. I do have a tiny little shuttle for real. Uh, not, why do I keep saying real looming? Textile looming rather than bead, or textile weaving rather than bead weaving. But um, I do have a tiny little one that's kind of cute. Um, but we don't we don't want to tamp this down too tightly because that's going to make the rest of this weaving um, buckle a little bit. So on this side we don't have to worry about it so much. Um, but on the second side, we will. Now, you can use Zap glue, or you could use E6000. In the past, we've used Zap. So I want to show you how to use the E6000, because the E6000 works really well. Um, and I use it a lot for adhering metals uh, together, um, metals and other items. So I'm going to use it today. You want to make sure that you're using it in a well-ventilated area because it is a little bit stinky. So make sure that you have ventilation there. I'm going to push this up and you can see I've extruded some E6000 onto my little 
plastic baggie here. So I'm not cutting anything away yet, right? But I am going to now liberally, what I like about, but not too liberally, what I like about the E6000 is you can control where you put it. Oh, that's a bad glue move. There you go. Zap, while also a gel, is a little more unruly. So it can leach, while you're doing this part, it can leach down into your project and stiffen the first couple of rows of beads. Okay, I'm going to get myself a fresh toothpick so it's not all gloopy. That's a technical term. So I can spread out some of that glue. Okay, good glue habits are essential for this. All right. Now what you don't want to use is like a super glue that's really runny. Okay? Because that glue will leach down into your weaving and stiffen it. It can also discolor your beads. Okay? Now see how I'm getting that glue right up to the edge of these threads? See that? So it's going to glue down and it looks like it needs just a little bit more over there. Let's get that in place. Okay. Again, that old adage, a little glue goes a long way. There we go. Spread it out. And that's all she wrote for that side. So let's do the other side. Very carefully, I'm going to grab my blooming, my weaving here, and I'm going to rotate it around. I'm not going to hit the top of the board, though, with my glued header. So let's do the footer of this. Okay. So uh, I'm going to cut this needle away because I'll reuse it. There we go. And I'll get that um, thread three lengths of my board. One, two, and three. Thread the end to the center of my needle. And pull it through. So now we're coming up really on the tail end of this, kids. So bear with me. We might run just a little bit over today. Oops, not through the beads, but I want to leave it in there. But this really is something we can't or that we don't want to rush, right? Because we don't want it to all end in tears at the end of this project. I'm just going to weave a couple in. You could weave a couple more if you wanted, but. I'll come in now and I will weave in. I'm actually going to start and go from the left because I'm more used to weaving that way, so it'll be easier for my hands. And that just goes, I should have counted how many passes I did. Maybe I did six or so. Let's see what that looks like. And again, notice at the end, and I'll point it out again when I do it here, we kind of cinch this weaving down so it makes this header a little more narrow so it'll fit into the opening of the class. Now if, again, this were real jewelry making time and not Kate demoing on a live broadcast time, I would let this glue sit overnight. Really let it cure so it's nice and um, it's not going to go anywhere. I need one more. Okay. There we go. So this is the thing. 
this is what can make or break your piece right here, okay? Is that if you glue this too tightly at this point, your weaving is going to warp and all of this work will be for naught. So there's a couple of ways that you can address this. See how I'm just kind of running my hands, my hand down the length of the weaving to kind of make sure that nothing is off or too tight, okay? Like so. Let's see if that lengthened it at all. I'm curious to see. It did, actually. Can you see that? How before, maybe if I put it on this side, it's a little bit easier to see. How before, well, maybe it didn't. Maybe just like a hair. But you just want to make sure that you're not, that this isn't too tight that there's some movement there, okay? So now I can glue this side confidently knowing that when I take this off, it's not gonna contract. And there's a question someone asked about how to watch the re-recording of this broadcast if you joined us a little bit later. You certainly can. Wherever you're watching us across the World Wide Web today, whatever platform, you can watch the replay on that same platform as I look around for my E6000. Can you see it in the shot? Where did it go? Here it is. Um, you can watch it, uh, as I say, on that platform that you're watching it now. A great place to rewatch where all of our um, broadcasts are archived. If you go right to the beadshop.com YouTube channel, everything is there in playlists. And we have a lot of other playlists as well for our basic skill builders, for macrame, for stuff like that. You can give it a follow and you'll find all of that learning just there. So let's go ahead and apply here. And again, just because we're super close to being finished, we don't want to get lax and mess up right at the end. So I know we're all holding our breath to see if it comes out. But I have confidence it will. There are only beads, you guys, right? Get that little bit of E6000 in there. And again, as I said earlier, before we started, the, or as we started the gluing, that you could also use Zap Glue, which we also carry here at Bead Shop. It also is a gel but it's just slightly more runny and it's a little stiff. It will stiffen these threads. So you wanna be really careful when you add it as you're adding that zap right up to this first line of beads here that it doesn't get on your beads because they will discolor, especially if they have a coating. And you don't want it to leach down into your threads or else like the first couple of rows of your bead weaving will be stiff. Okay, so now here is what we've got, okay? And again, I would let this go, um, I'd let this sit overnight, right? I'd let it rest. But since we're on <clears throat> demo time, I'm gonna cut it off. And these are still slightly, you know, wet but that's okay. We're just going to glue them right into the ends and we're going to pretend that they're dry. Okay. So I'm going to flip, okay, and clip. And let's take a look. I'm going to get that big baggie here so that my glue isn't on my surface. Now, if I'm going to push that back down. There we go. And that, since it moved a little bit, the glue hasn't quite set. So I'm going to grab a little more glue. It's a little hard to see, so I'm going to put all of this back on this box. 
I think it likes the light of this better. The camera does. Get a little bit more. So now, I will do what Janice calls giving it a haircut. Okay, that one didn't move down. Again, we really want this to be dry, but it'll it'll be okay. When I get it glued in there, it's not going to make much of a difference. There we go. And I just want to make sure that one looks good. Okay. So we want to get a really sharp pair of scissors or thread snips here. Those aren't thread snips. Um, again, I moved. Well, my regular scissors should work okay. But if I had them sitting in here, I would use my snips. But I'm just going to use my scissors. I'm going to clip away my excess thread there and there. And I'm going to cut across the top here. Okay. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Can you see why I give you the advice of waiting? taking a rest in between the weaving and the closing because it can be a little nerve-wracking to cut these off. Okay, so there you go. You've got it. And again, I'm going to get a little baggy here. And I'm just going to kind of use that to press the glue in. And you can see it's almost set, but you really want it to cure well. You can see there's not as much glue on the back side here, so I'm actually going to use that as maybe my front side because it's super clean. Okay, But remember, yeah, what Janice is also mentioning, let it really let it dry before you um, cut all of this away. Let it sleep overnight with its glue in place. Okay, And then the clipping with your really strong scissors, with your really sharp snips will go great. So now we're going to check it and make sure that it's going to go right inside this clasp. And it does see how it fits right, right in there. I don't want to shove it in there too much because I want to get my glue on there first. And I am actually going to trim this just a hair more. I need to get a little closer to my eye view. There we go. Clip it just a bit, and I'm going to do this other side, and then I'll get it back into the shot. I just needed it a little closer in my vision before I put it back in. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to glue it into the clasp. That's all we've got left. So I'm going to get that E6000. Save all those little baggies that we send your beads in, right? They come in handy. I'm going to get a fresh toothpick. And I'm going to keep my clasp closed. People have a tendency sometimes at all, oh, I'm going to attach, and I'm going to just glue this side on and this side on. Well, you don't want to glue the piece in upside down on one side inadvertently. So keep the clasp connected. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to add a bit of glue Got a little bit of extra there. Right on the back wall. Hard to see, but right in the back wall of this clasp. Okay. Squeegee off the excess. And I want to make sure that that glue is reaching all four walls of the interior. That's what makes this work. Okay. If you don't have glue <clears throat> on all the sides, it's not going to make a good contact. So then you just come in with your glue and you let it sit. Now I've got a little edge there, just a little, it's hard to see, but I've got a little 
piece of thread there that I want to shove in there. Shove is the is the technical term for it. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that the end of that thread and I'm going to use the tip of my toothpick to shove it up inside the clasp. There we go. Yep, got it. Now, what I like to do, and, and I'm going to do it here because you saw me glue that side. I let this cure. I do one side at a time. And especially for this one with the E6000, I really like to put it in place and then let it sit. The thing about E6000, you guys, is that it um, it really works best, well, and all glues are this way, really. It really works best when you don't screw with it, okay? So what you want to do at this juncture also, before you, after this is uh, glued, uh, you can, um, you can kind of bend this piece around into a circle and make sure it's nice and fluid. But we did a lot of that, okay? And then Kathy's asking why are you not gluing the other side and let set before you. Both both sides have been have been glued, Kathy. This side's been glued and this side. So it's it's in there. I don't know, maybe I can but see you can see the back. I could I could add just maybe a hair more right inside there. See if I still have some that, and I could just lie lay just a little bit right there on the interior. I think I will. There's a fine line between too much glue and not enough, right? So I'm going to grab this on my toothpick, on the end of my toothpick. Not too much, not too messy. Open it up. And again, this is the back the underside. So we just want to make sure, you know, that our top part really looks good. But we want our back to look as good as the front. There we go. Squeegee it off using the toothpick. And again, I'm going to turn it over, push that in, and I'll just let that set. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. And so, Kathy, that's what, okay, so why aren't you gluing the other side? I put a lot of glue on the inside of the clasp. You could add a little more glue onto here as well. And that's why uh, I added, as I turned it over and I looked at it, I was like, yeah, there's a little bit of space there that needs a little more glue. So that's why I did what I did. So good eye, good catch on that. Um, you can always go back and add a little more glue but it's really hard to take the glue away, right? So that's my story. There it is. I'll do the other side and then I'll go off to Karen and she will have this finished look on, um, on the website. I don't want to take the baggie out from underneath it because I don't want to mara up my nice, um, my nice uh, piece here. So I'm going to move this, but uh, Christine had a question about the leisure. Um, so I'm going to show you those, and then I'll uh, sign off with a couple of things, and then we'll call this one a wrap, all right? And here is, uh, this is the uh, Super Duo, the, um, the Transparent Leisure Blue. It's also a new one that we've got. Let me open that up. So you can see they're really, it's hard, they're hard to capture on the camera, but they're really reflective and nice. They're a little darker um, than they appear on, or they're a little lighter than they appear on the camera. Here it is in a white dish. Maybe that's a little bit easier for you to see. But they're really, they're a glorious bead. The finish is really just beautiful. Okay? Really, really gorgeous. So that's what those look like there. Okay? Um, so as I wrap this, literally, thank you, uh, I wrap this uh, broadcast up. I did want to remind everyone that, of course, you can find all of the information for 
the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Sign up for our newsletter, you guys, for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. If you are watching, uh, or if you got your newsletter this morning, you saw our um, coupon code that we've got in there, and I'm just going to share it with you guys right here now. Um, for the February is the month of love, and we love you all so much. We're giving a 14% uh, off store-wide with no minimum if you use the coupon code LOVE14 at checkout, right? And that um, coupon uh, expires on Sunday, the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. Um, and uh, only one coupon code can be used uh, per order, um, et cetera, et cetera, all that fine print. And, of course, you can also find us on all of our social right here at beadshop.com. You can go to uh, beadshop.com on Instagram to follow us. You can find us on our bead shop group called The Bead Table. And, of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at beadshop.com. Also, you guys, I'm going to give you a quick flash before I put myself back on the screen. We have something super fun coming on Friday. That's all I'm going to show you about that. <laughs> so make sure and check out your newsletters, everybody, um, because the um, the details on that uh, little beauty will be out there. We'll also put a reminder for you guys uh, about the great bead extravaganza that's coming up this weekend. Um, so stay tuned to your newsletter for more information about that. And, of course, Janice and I will be here on Friday. Friday for uh, the Bead Doctor episode. We're going to um, answer your questions. We've already got some of them uh, that we have filed away and ready to go. Um, and then next week, um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, design principles and stuff like this. Um, some of you watched the great, um, uh, what do I want to say, the the Beetle on Design Challenge that we did. We're going to um, talk a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about that on um, our next Free Tip Friday. And I've got the piece uh, right here that I made in person. We'll link it also in the newsletter, how you can go vote for your favorite. But as you can see, oh, it layers really nicely. I'm just going to leave it on. Um, but that voting for uh, the Beetle on Challenge, you can see myself and 24 other fantastic designers, the pieces that they made in that hour challenge that they had. So I'm wearing mine. Um, we'll link it again uh, in the newsletter, but you can also go right to the Beetle on Facebook page and find it there. Take a look at them. They're all really amazing. It was great to hang out with those that talented group, but um, I'm digging my necklace. I really like it, but we'll talk about it. Um, not this Free Tip Friday, but the next Free Tip Friday. And the voting for your favorite on that goes until the 19th of February, so you've got plenty of time to look them over and cast your vote for your favorite. Um, well, that being said, kids, I think that's it. Janice will be here for Bead Doctor with me on Friday, and have a safe uh, week until then. Stay creative. Uh, use that coupon code. And we'll see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.